Hello and welcome back to Football Manager 2019 with USL Dunkirk in the French third division. Today is a very, very big episode. Three huge matches will be taking place in today's episode. First up, it will be up against fourth place Laval. If we lose, we will drop down potentially down to fifth. Could even be all the way down to sixth. If we win, we potentially could go joint top of the table with Borges Peronas. Then a huge match against Liga 1 side at Strasbourg. I believe they're Liga 1, Stra uh, Strasbourg. In the, uh, the the Coupe de France in the 10th round, I think it is. And then finally, finishing it off with top of the table, Borges Peronas. They've only lost one game all season. Hopefully, we can make it two. If we can beat Laval and Borges Peronas, we will go probably top of the table. I think it's safe to say... And if we go past Strasbourg, we are in for some big money and for some big name ties in the next round of the Coupe de France. Let's jump straight in then to the first match of the episode. Laval are our opponents. They're wearing a lovely orange strip with a nice black sash down the middle. We are in inconsistent form, which I think, looking at it, is somewhat unfair, considering we've won three of our last five games and uh, only drawn one and lost one, whereas Laval are in decent form and haven't in theory picked up as many points as we have. The starting lineup we are going to go for then. We are sticking with the 442 diamond on the Gegen Press. It's called custom. I don't know what I've changed to make it custom, but apparently it's custom. So in goal will be Joan Hartuk. I was tempted to play Axel Maraval because Maraval is a very good goalkeeper, but Hartuk in theory is a better goalkeeper and he's a natural sweeper keeper on attack. So Hartok keeps his place. Bubba Castilla, Babatore, Jeremy Hoisman and Giovanni Chuacho will be the back four. But boy, Traore will be the defence midfielder with Martin Francois and the little Ivorian Sebastian Decoy just in front of them. Dimitri Boudad, Idrissa Bar and Andy Faustin will lead the line. I'm very happy with this lineup. You can see Sebastian Decoy is the only one there really who's got a little question mark next Next to him, I don't care. Sebastian Decoy, he's my player. He's one of the few players in this team that I've bought and found myself. Bubba Casilla is another one who's mine. I guess Joan Hartuck is also mine and Andy Faustin. But Sebastian Decoy, he's like he's the one I'm going to be most proud of for when he succeeds. Laval then playing a very attacking formation with four uh, main players attacking us. Bassetti rings a bell. Why does his name ring a bell? Nice. I mean, he's recently played for Nice. Maybe that's why. I mean, he's filth. For this level of football, he's absolute filth. So, Alexi Bassetti is a player that we need to keep an eye out for. Arguably, this match against Laval is probably bigger than the Borges Peronas match. Because Borges Peronas, I think they're, they're probably too good for this league. If we can beat Laval, we are going to put ourselves into a very good position to potentially fight for automatic promotion. Or potentially winning the league if we lose to Laval here we are potentially out of it completely Laval after eight and a half minutes go for goal and somehow manage to win themselves a corner on this very wet day in northern France corner comes in Torre heads clear Vincent gets it now for Laval he doesn't get tackled cross comes back in again Francois can clear it but it's not a very good corner or clearance sorry that their left back their left back's name or whoever that was on the ball someone's just hit the keyboard anyway 13 minutes in, we've got another highlight. Look at it. It's just a bunch of letters. It's not a name. Uh, Traore, Boudad with the ball now, runs forward into the penalty area. He goes down. It is an inch-perfect tackle. Boudad thought he was going to get his 11th or 12th goal of the season from the penalty spot. Torre heads forward. Sebastian Decoy forward. Dimitri Boudad. Bah! With the ball now. He's going to have to go backwards. Silla. Silla's going to play inside Boudad once again. Back to Baboy Traore. Francois picked up a book in. Andy Faustin spins, goes for goal. And it is just wide of the post. The new signing here at Dunkirk. And already another highlight. Boudad's cross comes in. Heisman was there. And it's going to get ran clear. Laval with the ball. Plays it forward. Danich on the left-hand side. Keeps going. He's got two Dunkirk players for company. Crosses in. Vincent with the ball. Hits the post. Heisman can clear it. It has been an extremely excitable first 15 minutes. Boudad with a free kick on 25. He goes for goal. No, he doesn't. It's cleared, but not very well. It's going to go for Hoisman. Hopefully, he's going to keep it in play. That is a lovely pink ball there, I've just noticed. Silla for us inside to Giovanni Chuacha. Runs forward to Dimitri Boudad. Boubacar Silla on the right. Crosses in. Idrissa Bar is there at the front post. And 26 minutes in, we have taken the lead against Laval. And we are potentially moving up into second place in the table, I think. 
We've not moved up to second place. We've moved up to third. Powell are winning. They've gone into second. There is a highlight immediately following the goal. Danich with the ball plays it back to the left back. Bullhorse crosses in. Verdia. Decoy. The little guy gets it clear, but it's coming straight back at us. Lambesse runs down the right-hand side. Back to Alexi Bassetti. Best player on the pitch by a country mile. Decoy headers the ball. I'm just happy that he's headed it. Abadi back to Milosevic. Lambese, I'm trying to say their names. I think I'm not doing a terrible job. Keeps going. Chuacha, no one's going for the ball there. Danic goes for goal. We've managed to scuff it clear. What? That was just a mess. Five minutes to go of the first half, and I'm reasonably happy with how it's going so far. We do have a highlight just before it gets to half time, and I'm hoping the team in orange isn't going to get anything from it. They are passing it about. And we are putting on some pressure across to the right-hand side. Loads of space, but it wasn't the best of headers. Now, Jovani Chuacha can run forward with a ball. Plays it through to Andy Faustin. Is it going to be two? It's, it's a Drissa Bar and he's hit it wide. It was an open goal. It was easier to score. Okay, at half-time, we are 1-0 to the good. Adrissa Bar with the only goal of the game so far. But 12 shots, one on target. One shot on target. How have we managed to have 12 and only challenge the keeper once? And that went in. I'm not going to do any subs at half-time, although Andy Faustin might be coming off at some point because he is on a 6.4. First highlight of the second half early on as well, and it's an equaliser for Laval. We just nodded off at the back. We just completely nodded off at the back there. Look at our defence. Just watch the defenders. They just kind of let him run. And Verdi is there at the back. Hartuk apparently will be disappointed to be beaten at that post, but I don't think that is Hartuk's fault one bit. Chuacha with a free kick for us. He's gone for goal and he's hit it wide. That's our 15th shot and it wasn't on target. Our 14th, sorry. Right, Faustin is going to be coming off for Kevin and Zuzi Mata. Don't really have too many options. We've dropped down to fourth place again. Budad with a free kick. Torres there. It's flapped out by the goalkeeper and it's going to be... It's a corner. Okay. Dimitri Budad is going to go over to take it. Is it going to be a good corner? It's to Tra Traore, not Torre. And it is cleared by Laval. We are going to get one point from this game. I can see it. Borges Peronas have dropped down to second place. Le Mans have taken the lead in the league. That is very interesting. Nicolas Brunil is going to come on for Sebastian Dacoy. Uh, Dacoy is on a 6.5, not doing so well. Everyone else is playing all right. But boy, Traore, again, a player not playing so well. But we don't really have the central midfielders to actually make a difference. So we're going to go attacking as well for the final 10 minutes. Five minutes of injury time. And we're probably not going to see any of it at all. Hold on, we will. We've got a minute and a half to play. Laval with the ball. Two players have picked up some form of injury. One is ours, and in the shape of Martin Francois. Cross in. They are going to win at the end, aren't they? What the hell's happened? What the hell? Oh, you... This game... This game hates me. This, this is the reason why I stopped playing the Burton save. Because of bull crap like that. We're going to lose to Laval in a game where we've had 15 shots. We've had two on target... What happened here? Hartuk just, Hartuk just didn't bother. And then Danich, open goal, makes it 2-1 with a minute and a half left to play of injury time. We've got a free kick, but nothing comes of it. The full-time whistle goes, and what a pile of crap. What a pile of absolute crap. We are going to get an angry team talk here. I am far from pleased. The strikers, you're also going to get an angry team talk because you were shocking. I don't care, address a bar, if you're seen down and pressurised. You probably missed your fair chances. What's more annoying is that was the week where Boris Perona's dropped points. We've dropped all the way down to fifth place now when we could, if we won, we could have been sat probably second or third. We're now in fifth place. Boris Perona's losing to Drancy. Le Mans going top of the table with a 2 0 victory against Villefranche. Powell and Laval obviously up there as well. Powell winning 4 1 against Chalette, bottom of the table, Chalette. And Laval obviously beating us. Up next then, we are going to be off to play Strasbourg in the French Cup. A little bit of a distraction, I guess, from the league, but it gives us a chance to actually bring in some money. Before we get to the Strasbourg game, we've actually made a signing because the transfer window has literally just closed about five minutes before, or oh, five minutes after I signed this guy. Verlaine Francois, a 21-year-old French defensive midfielder and also can play as a defender, uh, as a centre-back or a centre midfielder. He's a natural ankh man, but can play that defensive midfielder role quite well. Two-star current ability, three-and-a-half star potential. He's only in as a hot prospect, not getting paid a huge amount of money either. I thought, you know what? Let's take a punt on this guy. 
match number two of three of the episode then. Strasbourg, RC Strasbourg in the Coupe de France, 10th round so far. Looking at it, there hasn't been any upsets as far as I can tell. A few lower league sides have managed to get through, but they did have slightly easier matches. Like I think Amin's aren't great, or maybe they are, I don't know. Anyway, doesn't matter. There's been no upsets yet. The first upset could well happen at Stade Marcel Tribut, where Dunkirk take on RC Strasbourg. Two changes then from the side that lost against Laval. First up, in goal, Axel Maraval comes in for Joan Hartuck because Joan Hartuck, I've noticed, can't keep clean sheets and when he lets in a goal, he does let in two goals. So, Axel Maraval is going to be playing today. Bubikar Silla, Babatore, Jeremy Hoisman and Jovany Chouac will be the back four. The boy Traore, Nicolas Brunil and Martin Francois will be the midfielders. Brunil's come in for Sebastian Dacoy. Dimitri Boudad, Adrissa Bar, and Andy Faustin will be the front three. I'm not expecting to get anything from this match. Just a competitive performance, I think, is probably what we're after here. If we can... I don't, does it go to replays? I don't know. If it goes to replays, great. That will be wonderful. If we manage to win, even better. If we lose, I'm not too fussed. Let's just not embarrass ourselves. So far, 20 minutes in, we've had no highlights, but also Strasbourg have only had one shot. Two shots now. 35 minutes in and the first highlight of the game is finally here. Heisman heads forward, but it's coming back towards us from Strasbourg. A Jock with a ball now to Carroll on the left-hand side. That's not Sebastian Carroll, is it? Crosses in. It's taken a wicked deflection and somehow sped up time. Babatore is going to have an own goal to his name. That doesn't... Science doesn't work like that. So Carroll with the ball here crosses in and then that... How did that speed up? Every player that hit Tori's ankle sped up. Hit Maraval sped up even more. I don't understand it. Budad with a free kick crosses in. Faustin's there. It is wide of the post, apparently. 42 minutes on the clock. Another highlight, but it's cleared up. Field from Strasbourg. De Costa with a ball. He's basically one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. And what a tackle that was from Jeremy Hoisman. It's going to be a throw-on, but it doesn't matter. That, that is a match-winning tackle, although we are losing. Half time, annoyingly, we've been the better side, but we're 1 0 down thanks to broken physics. So we're just going to get the assistant to do it. I'm not going to do any changes yet. Our strikers apparently not playing very well, which does not surprise me. The first highlight of the second half is still going, and Strasbourg still have the ball. They've got the ball in the back of the net. That's why it's still going. Marvin Martin with the goal. It is 2 0 now to Strasbourg. It looks like we are going to be bowing out of the French Cup in the 10th round. Going to give everybody an encourage. See if that works. Oh, three people listened. We've got a corner. Boudad takes the corner. Six-yard box. It's cleared. Faustin to Brunil. Boubacar Silla into the area. Crosses in. Andy Faustin's there. He's hit the bar. He's hit the bar. He was offside anyway. How did he miss that? Right, 65 minutes in. Faustin is coming off for Valentin Candas, a player who doesn't really get much football at the moment. Eric Tybee, maybe? Eric Tybee, sure. Eric Tybee and Nicholas Brunil in the middle of the park as well we've got we've still got a fair amount of time we can still get back into this throw on for Chuacha to take Candace flicks it on somehow and I don't know how but Strasbourg do get the ball on the left hand side there's two in the box if he can find them he finds Martin and it is saved by the goalkeeper we've got 12 minutes to play I've just told them to show some passion and everybody seemed to listen a little bit but nothing really has come of the uh, team talk that I shouted at them it's going to be full time and it's going to be 2-0 to RC Strasbourg. We're out of the cup. It's unfortunate because we've gone out basically to broken physics, but we should have lost anyway. You predicted a win for Dunkirk today. I mean, you, Jonas Barrow from Le Keep, probably shouldn't have a job anymore. Le Maritimes fall to harsh defeat. So we did play well. We were arguably the better side. 13 shots to their five. Possession was better as well. Unfortunately... They scored some ridiculous own goal. And in the second half, right at the start of it, they managed to just basically start before us. And I don't think we even get any money for it. No, we don't. Match number three, then, of the episode. Now, I didn't say this earlier, but it is very, very possible now that there is a distinct possibility that we might actually get zero victories and zero draws in this episode. We've lost three on the spin now. We have obviously played two very good teams. Laval, who are now top of the table. We are obviously up against Borges Peronas, who have all dropped all the way down to fourth place. But a simple victory here will probably put them back top of the pile, or at least into second place. 
The starting lineup we're going to go for then in goal, Axel Maraval will keep his place. Silla Torre, Hoisman, and Chuacha will be the back four because we don't have any better than those four really. The boy Traore will be the defence midfielder. Martin Francois and Sebastian Decoy will be the midfielders. Although Decoy is going to be playing as the box to box midfielder today because Francois is a very good Carrillero and I feel like maybe putting him as the box to box might not be the best plan. Budad will be the advanced playmaker with Adrissa Bar and Kevin and Zuzi Mata as the strikers today. I've got to the point now where I just don't want to lose. I just don't want to lose. I'm I'm kind of enjoying this save at the moment, and I think if I lose this match, it might suddenly turn everything around because there's a there is a distinct possibility that this season we could get promoted. I think if we lose to Borges Peronas, we're probably going to start the downward spiral, which Let's face it, we've had with every other save so far in FM19, but if we lose this, we're going to start the downward spiral and we're just not going to win any games for a very long time. Silla crosses the ball in after just five minutes. Martin Francois goes for goal. It is just over the bar, though. I think, realistically, a victory has to be the target here. If we win, we'll go on to 39 points. We will move ahead of Boris Peronas because... They do this weird thing where it's matches against each other as opposed to goal difference and all that nonsense. So we will move in to fourth place. Borges Peronis with the ball. Pierre Charles crosses in and it's an unmarked header from Ibrahim Sacco. We're 1-0 down. This game, this game, I'm telling you, this game is just out to get me. Show some passion. Do something. Everybody's fired up. Is it going to make a blind bit of difference? Probably not. Half time then. Not a lot's happened, apart from Boris Perona's taking the lead. And once again, we're doing okay. We've had a lot of the ball. We've had a lot of shots. We haven't had the majority of the ball. Tell them, that, remind them that the pressure's off. The pressure is most definitely not off. The pressure is very much still on. We need to win this one. Show me something else in the second half. Everyone seemed motivated. Good. Tell them the pressure's off. One minute into the second half, and there's a highlight. Bubica Silla with the ball back to Torre. Torre to Dimitri Budad, across, Sebastian Decoy goes for goal, takes a massive, massive deflection, and it's cleared upfield. Is this going to be a continuation of the highlights? Silla to Traore, now Babatore, Heisman, Heisman's looking for Chiracha, no he's not, he's trying to go upfield instead, and now Borges Perona's with the ball, Sacco the goal scorer, plays it across to Sherry, who has loads and loads of time, what the hell, what the actual, Sacco, Sacco passed that to Sherry, and then just ran through the middle. Sacco has the ball on the halfway line. Now, I don't... We, he cuts off screen, but Sacco just keeps running. Just keeps running in a straight line. And just smashes it in. What an absolute shambles. Highlight straight after the goal. I'm hoping... I'm hoping this is going to be 2-1. Do not be 3-0. 2-1 is exactly what we need. <laughs> okay, Bubakazilla. I thought he's ruined it. I thought he's ruined it with that effort. Instead, Bubica Silla had just scored some very, very strange goal. And I'm very happy. It's 2-1. We are definitely back in the game. What does he even do here? Is this a cross or a shot? I think it's a shot. That's a spectacular swerving effort. He wanted to do that. Calamand with a free kick for Boris Perona. Sherry, who got the assist. Sacco, who's got both of their goals. Decoy with a tackle but they still keep hold of the ball. Plays it all the way across to Pierre Charles on the left-hand side, runs inside, and Sherry's at the back. And our defending is just appalling at the moment. Every single time they any team against us has an attack, I'm concerned we're going to concede, because pretty much every time someone does have an attack, we do concede. Chuach has dropped down to a 5.7 following that, and Zuzi Matter as well is playing awful. So Faustin and Anthony Udar are coming on. I don't think it's going to make a single bit of difference, is it? We are now three points ahead of ninth place. So it looks like this season the wheels will come off and we're probably going to finish mid-table. I was hoping, I was genuinely hoping that we'd get promoted first time of asking. Doesn't look like that's going to happen, does it? There is a highlight going on, by the way. Silla gets the ball from Bar, crosses in. Calamand makes an easy claim of the ball. So where is the highlight going? Calamand kicks it upfield, headed for by Heisman. Sacco with the ball, though, to Sherry. Sacco and Sherry have been running this game. Kalulu cuts inside. Tori heads forward. Boudad now for the, for, the, for the us, apparently. Francois. Silla, the goal scorer. Runs forward, lumps it upfield, finds Andy Faustin into the area. Andy Faustin goes for goal. Calamand makes an easy save, but we do get a corner. We've got 22 minutes to find at least two goals. Budad's corner comes in deep. It's gone all the way through. Adrissa Bar gets there first, though. 
Heisman. Heisman back to Francois. We're going backwards. Tor Traore. Udar. Across to address a bar on the left-hand side. Where are you going to go, buddy? Where are you going to go? You're going to get tackled by Kalulu. And we're going to get a free kick. No, we're not going to see. Corner for Borj Peronas. Ten minutes to play. Kalulu goes for goal. It is wide of the post. I've just done a team talk. I've said show some passion once again. Udart with a throw. Finds Traore. Martin Francois. Silla. Plenty of space if he wants to run into it. He's got the legs to run into it as well if he wants to. Faustin on the volley. What a finish that is from Andy Faustin. He scored two goals this season and they've both been great volleys. We've got nine minutes to find one more goal. Do I change anything? I'm, we're going to have to go very attacking. There's no point... Goal difference means nothing. Losing 3-2 is just as bad as losing 7-2. We're still going to lose the match. It doesn't make a difference. Silla with the ball. Inside, Metref goes for goal. It's 4-2. It's 90 minutes on the clock. Ah, oh, this, this game, this game, this game is just... Oh, it, it doesn't want me to play it. It really doesn't. A minute left to play of injury time. We're going to lose three out of three, or three, or four out of four, sorry. We've lost the last four games. Alo with the ball, cuts inside, goes for goal. Maraval easily claims the ball. 30 seconds left to play. But our season, in one fell swoop, over the course of two episodes, has just imploded, and we've ruined everything. Idrissa Bar's not even going to bother trying, because what's the point we're going to lose anyway? The full-time whistle goes then, and we have been beaten once again where we've probably had 18 fouls. 18 fouls. What are we doing? Are we doing the wrong training? Are we, are we doing boxing training again? So after a very disappointing episode where we've lost two in the league, we've lost one in the cup as well, we've dropped down to fifth place in the table. We are starting to lose touch with the top three. I mean, the top two is obviously the main target. If we can get third, we get a playoff spot, which is something that we can possibly do with. But at the moment, we're now five points behind Le Mans, six points behind Laval and Borch Peronas. Even if we get onto the same, onto level terms with Borch Peronas and Laval, we will still be below them. So in theory, we're seven points off of the top of the table now. 22 games played. I don't know how many are left to play. Not a lot, really, is it? We need to learn to defend, I think, is the problem. We went, at the start of the season, we went how many games is that without conceding? We went a very, very long time without conceding. Now, four against Borch Peronas, two against Strasbourg, two against Laval, two against Cuevli Ruin. We need to learn how to defend again. And I don't know what's changed because Joan Hartok hasn't played every game. He's played most of them, but not every game. Thank you very much for watching this very match-heavy episode of Football Manager 2019 with Dunkirk in the French Third Division. If you did enjoy, if you wouldn't mind leaving a like, if you want to see more... Please hit the subscribe button and I will see you next time where we will be playing Tours and I don't know, maybe, maybe Chalette. We might play Tours and Chalette because, you know, we might beat Chalette.